Okay, so we will be doing an elbow active range of motion testing with my volunteer Jasmine here. So we will choose an affected side again and an affected motion. Let's just do right side supination most painful. So that needs to be by protocol, needs to be done last. So right supination. So we are going to be starting with the left one then. So Jasmine, I would like you to uh, follow my directions about the motions that you need to be doing. So bring your arm out like that. Wonderful. So I would like you to do flexion. Okay, and then you can relax. Now one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of therapists do, they supinate the client's arm and ask them to do flexion. Now what we need to do technically is to bring the elbow into a neutral position and then do flexion. Okay, so this is a big mistake, very common one. So I would like you to now do with a neutral elbow flexion again, bring your elbow to your shoulder and relax. Now can you lock your elbow please? Wonderful, okay. Another alternative would be relax and then drag your arm towards me on the table. Wonderful, that's also a good idea for locking the elbow. You can relax again, get into the neutral position. Now I would like you to bring your palm onto the table and then reset and then now palm up towards the ceiling. And that's it, that was pronation and spination. That's it for the elbow active range of motion. There's four motions. Now we're gonna go through the same thing with the affected side this time. Again, I'm gonna ask her to do flexion, but remember, we want flexion to be on a neutral elbow. So we'll follow that through, okay? And then please make sure to lock your elbow. Excellent. And then could you tell me if there's any pain so far? Mm -hmm. Okay? Now we're gonna go through the same motion like we did this time Pronation again, excellent, and then reset, and supination, great. Any pain? No. No, that's it. So this is active range of motion for elbow. We're going to be doing passive range of motion for elbow joint in this video. Uh, so my volunteer Jasmine, again, will be uh, assisting me. So let's choose the same option that we used as the active range of motion component. Uh, right side supination is the most affected and most painful one. So we're going to be starting with the left elbow. Now I need you to pay attention on the hand placement because it's important and it, there's differentiation between wrist and elbow joint at this point. Depends on where you place your hand. You're testing more elbow versus more wrist. So Jasmine, can I, do I have permission to do a hands-on assessment? Sure. Perfect. As you all know, informed consent is extremely important. Even though you think that you have consent, you, it's a great idea and a great practice to uh, once in a while refresh that consent. So I'm just going to use, can you lean further a little bit more? Wonderful. So I'm going to do flexion. And as you know, a little bit of a passive or pressure for end feel is important. So at this point, again, I push, push a little bit further at the end. Flexion, now extension. Because extension is locking the elbow, at this point, there's no need to push too hard. It's a bone on bone and feel anyway. Now I'm securing the elbow and grabbing the radius and then turning supination and then pronation. Now it's very common to hear a little clicks and cracks at this point. It's a good practice to also ask the client, any pain so far? No. Perfect. Now for sake of being synchronized with the other side, I'm going to do pronation first and then supination, another end feel. And that's all the actions we need to do. Active range of motion, four actions, passive range of motion, four actions. So I'm going to follow the same thing here. Flexion, extension, again, pronation, and supination. Any pain? No. Wonderful. And that is basically it for the passive range of motion for the elbow. Four motions, flexion, extension, pronation, and supination. We're going to be doing resistant range of motion for elbow. Uh, we will follow up with our example from the very beginning of right elbow 
supination being the most painful. So again, same protocol applies, we will do that last. So I would like you to just pay attention that we need to start on the unaffected side, that being the left. So Jasmine, resistant range of motion um, is a teamwork. So again, I will be putting pressure on different directions, which I will point it out before I do. I will count from five to one, and then we will change direction. Uh, there are six directions this time unlike passive range of motion and active range of motion. Um, if it hurts at any point, please let me know. The goal is to match my pressure here, not to win, just to make sure that you know we understand that. Um, can I proceed? Yeah. Excellent. So at this point, it's important to bring the elbow into open pack position, also called neutral position, because wrist and range of motion testing needs to be done on this position at all times. So at this point, I will put pressure downward, but it's a good idea to support the elbow. If there is anything happening at the elbow, now my hand can relatively easily feel it. So I'm going to push in from this direction. Hold, please. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to pull in, pushing up. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, one thing to pay attention, I'm not putting my hand here. It's beyond the wrist joint, because if I put my hand on the, ha on the hand, then I will be testing more radial deviation of the wrist versus flexion of the elbow. So my hand placement needs to be here. Now, I will be testing pronation even though I'm pulling the arm into supination. Now a good practice would be to remember here is if I push up and she needs to resist. So if I take my hand off, she will continue going pronation. That's what you're basically testing. So I'm going to be pushing up this way, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Now hand placement is again important. Now I'm going to be pulling down, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. That's it for the elbow portion, but we are adding two wrist range of motion at this point for this testing, which means that I will be adding wrist extension and wrist flexion. So. I will put in pressure at this point, please press, um, match my resistance, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and going here, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now for the sake of synchronicity again, I will proceed one more time with pronation and supination. So hold, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now it's important to also pay attention to the hand placement here one more time. I'm not grabbing the entire wrist here, entire forearm. I'm actually just grabbing the radius because radius is the only bone that is actually doing the pronation and supination motion. Now I'm going to proceed with the affected side. Again, one more time, I'm going to remind myself it is right supination. If you don't remember, the easiest thing to do is ask the client again where it hurts. So we'll follow up with the open pack position of the shoulder one more time and I'm gonna be pushing pressure here five four three two one and pull up five four three two one now if you noticed last time I actually put the wrist down I just even though I told you that you're supposed to hold on the open pack position of the elbow because open pack position of the wrist is actually just neutral just like this I'm gonna put pressure from here, five, four, three, two, one, and here, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Now I'm going to proceed with the pronation and supination. I'm gonna to try to throw, like pull you onto supination, which means I'm testing pronation. And hold, five, four, three, two, one. And hold, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Any pain in any of these motions? No. No? Excellent. Thank you very much. And that was wrist and range of motion for elbow.